Let's talk about defense. In a fight, there's two main things you need to focus on. Dealing damage and not taking damage. Depending on who you are, these two things will be weighed differently to each other. Some of you are going to have them be perfectly balanced. Some of you are going to weigh slightly to one side while making sure that you have enough of the other so you can still change your style mid-match or squeeze out a victory. Or, maybe, you're an intellectual like me and look at defense and know that their best defense is just more offense. Because of this, I like to play a fast pace, high intensity, big, slow, hard hitting characters. And apart from a few in Guilty Gear, nothing could quite fill that hole until he showed up. The Secretary of Absolute Defense, Gold Lewis Dickinson. I may have said some rude things about this character before, but I'm happy that he's in the game. Gold Lewis being a big honking boy means that he has limited movement. Well, not as bad as Potemkin. Gold Lewis is only able to do one jump and a slow air dash, but he has some huge normals. Like, oh my god, look at that! What is like half screen, bro? What the? It's past 30 seconds, right? Okay, good. What the fuck? So, yeah. Gold Lewis has a big no-no zone. As in, if you step anywhere in this radius, the last word you're gonna hear is, Sorry, partner. You're in the no-no zone. He's honestly a bit of an oxymoron. He's amazing at stuffing your approaches, but he's got a large health pool and is best played while he's right in front of your face. Why is that? Well, that's because of his Behemoth Typhoon. Behemoth Typhoon is an unethical weapon of war created in the 1960s, which was hidden away until Gold Lewis decided that this small child with a dolphin needs to be taught a lesson. Taste the power of the US of A! Ah! Behemoth Typhoon is technically one move and eight moves at the same time because Daisuke hates us. Because of this, I'm not going to be talking about all of them, but just the most important ones. I will now attempt to describe how this eight in one move is executed. This is a diagram of an arcade stick with a square gate lever. Pushing left moves your character left, pushing right moves your character right, down crouches and up jumps. You can push into the corners to do two movements at the same time. Notice how if you overlay a number pad over the top of it, you can see all the possibilities of where the stick can be. This is why we use the number pad notation, by the way. In order to execute Behemoth Typhoon, you pick a position for the swing to start, then at the opposite end of the stick is where the swing will finish. Depending on which way you move the stick is the way that Gold Lewis will swing the coffin. So if you start in the 4 position and move the stick through 2 to 6, Gold Lewis will swing the coffin from the back to his front going low. Whereas if you went through 8, Gold Lewis would swing the coffin over his head. Because of this, there's a lot of different possibilities for this one move. 8 specifically. So I don't really want to go through everything because that would take forever and honestly I barely use any of these. So I have no idea what they do. Let's get into the main ones. I'll use the notation as a starting, middle, and ending position, so you know which way you have to move the stick. 624 is the fastest version of Legima Maifun, and it's generally used to get a soft knockdown to end a combo. While it is negative 5 on block, the pushback is so far that most characters can't get effective punishes on him, though they do get their turn back. 486 is a slow, hard-hitting overhead. It's extremely reactable, and the good news is that if you block it, it's punishable. I'm sorry, what? Huh? It's the same speed startup as Angie's overhead and it's plus 12? Oh, this is bold <laughs> fair, as it's extremely interruptible and you can lead to an Oki situation or a full combo if you're quick on the draw. The benefit of using it is that it leads to a full free combo that can do over half of anyone's HP. An overhead that's reactable, swings above the player's head, and leads to a full combo when it hits. Where have I heard that before? Eh, it's probably nothing. 862 is a much faster overhead, but it doesn't lead to a full combo without Roman cancel. But it still does a good amount of damage and leaves you plus unblocked. Yay! 426 is a downward swing which you can use on your landing if you're so inclined. I never did it. But it's best used as a combo tool in the corner as it causes a wall bounce when the enemy hits the wall. Meaning that you can do some very easy loops that do massive damage. The others have niche implications, aka I have no idea what you're supposed to do with these. Each of these moves have a specific property that I haven't talked about yet, and that's because it's to do with something that none of us do, and that's blocking. If your enemy blocks Kazima Limoon, they take a lot of chip damage. What? What the hell? That's so much! You can no joke kill someone from just chip damage, which is so bull! So brilliant. Wait, something doesn't feel right. 
Now that we've been over most of his kit that's one move, we've got other things to talk about. Let's talk about this little bar at the bottom of the screen. This is his threat level meter. Like a real American, the more a conflict goes on, the more they escalate needlessly. And this is the same with most of his special moves. As three phases, phase one is Americanly calm. All the specials are in their base form, aka pretty weak. Phase two is enemy spotted. The affected moves last longer, hit more, and do more damage. Phase three is this guy's been looking at me for three seconds. I need air support. Tactical move. <laughs> All of your moves range from actually really good to, you know what, I'll take it. 214S has Gold Lewis summon a little drone that moves forward slowly and deals with projectiles. It's really good for approaching zoning enemies and just people at the end of the screen in general. It is pretty slow moving, but so are you. It also gives you time to react to what they're doing. The higher the threat level, the more times it hit and the further it goes. 236S is the most American shit I've ever seen. You go into your coffin and pull out a fucking minigun. Huh? Why? Wh where did you get that from? What's in the coffin? What's going on? Now we move on to the supers, and like most characters, he's got two of them. 236236K is a weird ass targeted thing that's happening, and I, I don't really get it. I don't understand what's going on. Ah! He calls upon the American ancestors and fires a big ass laser beam that would be powerful enough to wipe out a town. It's a really powerful tool for Oki and can lead to some good mix up as it obscures a lot of your attacks, so you can do a fully charged dust, a cross up, whatever you're feeling like. It's all on the menu. The move is affected by the threat level, so I recommend using it on threat level 3. Next, we have his GG input P Super, also known as DOWN WITH THE SYSTEM! ANARCHY RAID SUPREME! This is his only reversal attack, so use it when you're in a pinch. This move isn't affected by the threat level, however, it does have three different properties with the amount of full circles that you do before executing the input. The more full circles you do, the longer the startup time, but the more damage you get on a full and soft connect. Obviously, the downside of the longer startup is that your enemy is more likely to recover from their attack during that time, so it's high risk, high reward. You know, for the Secretary of Absolute Defense, his defensive options are terrible. <laughs> Perfect, and everyone should follow the- WAIT! It happened again! Okay, something fucking weird is going on and I don't get it. I feel like I'm being forced to say things I don't think to make this character look good. Good, good, good. Look at this clip here. I'm playing the Gold Lewis Mirror matchup, which I f think is an amazing matchup. I just did it again, right? As you can see here, I'm currently stuck in the corner and not having a good time. This is easily his biggest weakness though. When you're winning, you're unstoppable. Able to plow through the enemy's life bar like it's nothing. When you're losing, uh, it's much harder to come back compared to other characters as you don't have many defensive tools. Something isn't right here. Look, here I am fighting this lowly, pathetic, monkey brain specimen. This poor soul thinks he can set up to the secretary of absolute defense. Well, He's got another thing coming. Don't mess with us defensive players. You rushdown players don't even think, do you? Poor souls. Oh, how dumb you are. Wait, something isn't right here. Who are you? What do you want? What do you want? As you can see here, I'm fighting Potemkin, another big body character. Though I respect you, you can just glue, and that's not good for you. <laughs> Silly grappler, man. It's time for you to die. Something isn't right here. Something isn't right. 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 Oh God! What the hell? Ah, Jesus! My head. Wait a minute, wait, I was... I was doing a Gold Lewis video, right? This... this character... this character... this... this character... THIS CHARACTER'S FUCKING BORING! HOLY CRAP, Axis, WHAT IS THIS, HUH?! This is how you start off the first season of DLC, Gold Lewis Dickinson? Happy Chaos is right there, bro, look at him! This is the exact antithesis of why I started playing Guilty Gear! Gold Lewis is a slow, heavy tank that is able to do a lot of damage when he gets his opening and pushes you back to the corner. I signed up for fast and frantic action, high intensity moment to moment gameplay where I'm constantly thinking of what my next option should be or how to deal with something, and Gold Lewis just forces me to slow down. 
and it's boring, bro! But just because I don't like Gold Lewis doesn't mean that you can't. He definitely has things that appeal to people, and I can see why some people like him. He's just not for me. That being said, Daisuke, if you're listening, if the next character isn't Slayer, I'm gonna be very upset.